Dear friends and followers, welcome to my channel. Let's all hear this clearance. C line 502, heavy equipped to Brussels, Kennedy 1 departure, Canarsie climb, vector steady, then at file, fork 1736. Today, I will be telling you about a very important topic which is transponder and squawk code. Hope you'll find it interesting and get to know something new. So without further delay, let's get started. So what is a transponder? A transponder, short form for transmitter and responder, is an inboard electronic device that produces a response when it receives a radio frequency interrogation. It assists ATC or air traffic controllers in identifying aircrafts on a radar scope and other aircraft's collision avoidance system. So here you see the picture of a transponder. This is a type C transponder which you will find in many smaller aircrafts. On the right hand side this image you see a type S or Sierra type transponder which you'll find in all the commercial airplanes. Now let's have a look how it looks on the radar scope when a pilot squawks the four digits given to the pilot by the ATC. So when uh, the pilot squawks the four digit given to him by the ATC it looks like this on the radar scope. Here you see all these white blips are the aircrafts. For example let's look at this one. This is EasyJet 904 Echo November at 6125 feet. Here is Jet Airways 17 at flight level 275. Again this is another aircraft EasyJet 99er Delta Echo at flight level 379er. Here we have Lufthansa Papa Romeo at flight level 122. Similarly these are all the aircrafts flying in this airspace. Now let's have a look at how the transponder works. The air traffic radar sends an interrogative 1030 MHz radio frequency pulsed signal. The aircraft answers on the 1090 MHz radio frequency with another pulsed signal. After decoding and measuring the delay of answer, the transmitted signal is used on the ATC radar to identify the aircraft, code or the call sign and display relevant information like the azimuth altitude, speed and the flight plan etc. Now let's have a look at the type of transponder that we have. Several different RF communication protocols have been standardized for civil aviation transponders. Depending up upon the interrogation mode, transponders are can provide identification code, aircraft position, pressure altitude, call sign and other relevant informations. So here down below you see the image where you find the different types of transponders that we have. For example, Mode A equipments transmits an identifying code only, whereas the Mode C provides identifying codes and aircraft pressure altitude. The Mode S on the other hand will provide multiple information formats to a selective interrogation or data exchange including the call sign It's designed to help avoid thing over interrogation and to allow automatic collision avoidance. Now let's have a look at the transponder setting. A transponder switch usually has several positions. Here you can see in this image below they are off, standby, on, altitude, traffic advisory, traffic advisory and resolution advisory. If you look down at this image you'll see standby which is the standby function this will power up the transponder and make it ready for operation then you have the on function which is mode a which will send primary information to the radar that is the ssr code and the position next we have the trans expander or which is basically the mode c or the alt function which will additionally transmit the altitude information here you have ta only and TARA. Functions such as TA and TARA will provide traffic advisory and traffic advisory resolution. For example, let's suppose two aircraft are getting closer to each other and will have a conflict in some time. So when the system detects the conflicting path, that if TA only is selected, something like this will sound in the cockpit. Traffic. Traffic. If TARA is selected, then a resolution advisory will also be provided and it will sound something like this. Climb, climb, descend, descend. 
Adjust vertical speed. Adjust. Maintain vertical speed. Maintain. Now let's have a look at the transponder ident. All mode A, mode C and mode S transponder includes an ident button which activates a special function known as the ident which is a short form for identity in order to help the air traffic controllers locate an aircraft. So here in the image you see this black button which is the ident button. Now let's take an example. Let's suppose you're flying in a very congested FIR where many aircrafts are flying along with you. So in order for the air traffic controller to identify you, he may take this radar identification method. He will basically say to squawk ident and the phraseology will sound something like that. EasyJet 589er squawk ident. When the pilot will hear this, he needs to respond and press this button and his blip on the radar scope will start flashing. In this way the air traffic controller will be able to identify the aircraft and give him instructions accordingly. Now let's have a look at the transponder codes. The transponder transmission usually uses a discrete code in order to identify the flight. Squawk codes are 4 digit octal numbers. The digits on a transponder read from 0 to 7 inclusive. Thus the lowest possible squawk is 0000 and the highest is 7777. If you look at this image, uh, this is a transponder code which is 4526. Let's have a look now at the code allocation. The transponder code or the SSR transponder code is normally allocated by each state with coordination with the regional air navigation agreements and taking into account the overlapping radar coverage over adjacent airspace. Codes like 7700-7600-7500 shall be reserved internationally for use by pilots encountering a state of emergency, a radio communication failure or unlawful interference respectively. Code 7700 is the emergency code, 7600 is the radio failure code and 7500 is the hijack code. Now let's have a look at the transponder 7700 code which is also called the emergency code. The pilot of an aircraft in a state of emergency shall set the transponder to code 7700 unless the ATC has previously directed the pilot to operate the transponder on a specified code. The pilot shall continue to use the specified code unless otherwise advised by the ATC. If the pilot is facing a simple pan or failure, for example let's suppose he is low on fuel which is not a distress, the code shall not be used. The pilot shall not use the 7700 code outside a state of emergency. An ATC can request a pilot to squawk 7700 if he declares an emergency or distress situation that is a mayday. After the aircraft has landed, an air traffic controller should ask the pilot to set a normal squawk code when the emergency is terminated. As the pilot set the transponder code to 2000 or ask a new code to the air traffic controller after the emergency is terminated. Down below we have an image of a radar scope where, where we see an aircraft squawking 7700. Transponder 7600, the radio failure code. The pilot of an aircraft losing two-way communication or one-way communication shall set the transponder to code 7600. The controller who notices a communication failure code will determine the extent of failure by instructing squawk ident or change the code. With that operation, if it is determined that the aircraft receiver is functioning, further control of the aircraft will be continued using code change or ident transmission to acknowledge a receipt of clearance. This code shall not be used to ignore ATC clearance or end contact. Again, this image shows how on a radar scope, an aircraft squawking transponder code 7600 looks. Now the transponder code 7500 which is called the hijacking code. If there is any unlawful interference with an aircraft in a flight, the pilot in command shall ex attempt to set the transponder code to 7500 in order to indicate the situation. Again down below we have an image of a radar scope where an aircraft is squawking 7500 and this is how it looks. Moving on to non-controlled codes. Let's talk about the VFR codes. Depending on local regulation, non-controlled VFR codes can change. The most frequently used codes are 1200 for US and Canada standard squawk codes, 7000 for Europe VFR standard squawk codes, 2000 is ICAO standard 
squawk code. In India, we basically use 1200 for VFR navigation. Again, down below we have an image of the radar scope where an aircraft is squawking 1200 and again on the right we have uh, the image of a radar scope where an aircraft is squawking 7000. For IFR, this, this is a unique worldwide non-controlled IFR code which is 2000 and here is the image. Now let's discuss about two scenarios of VFR. For example, let's suppose uh, I am Victor Tango Golf Echo Charlie. So, Victor Tango Golf Echo Charlie will call the Chennai delivery for a local VFR circuit and this is how it goes. Chennai delivery, Victor Tango Golf Echo Charlie with information delta on board at General Aviation Stand request VFR clearance for local circuit. After hearing this, the air traffic controller will respond him back saying, Victor Tango Golf Echo Charlie, Chennai delivery very good evening. You cleared for left hand circuit pattern runway 07, climb and maintain 1100 feet squawk VFR. So here if you look at this phraseology, when he says squawk VFR, that means that the pilot is supposed to squawk 1200 or 7000 as per local standard. Let's take up another scenario where a, a passenger airliner wants to go to VFR and cancel his IFR. So he'll call up the Chennai approach and say, Chennai approach Jet Airways 123 request cancellation of IFR and go visual. Hearing this, the Chennai approach controller will say Jet Airways 123 Roger IFR cancel at 1200 Zulu resume on navigation frequency change approved squawk VFR. So again you have heard that uh, the controller have said him to squawk VFR and he's supposed to squawk 1200. So this is all about the squawk code and about the transponder in a nutshell i hope you have liked the video subscribe to my channel if you like the video smash the thumbs up button do comment to let me know the topics you want me to discuss and also about your doubts thank you very much for watching and see you all very soon